thanks so much, Michael, for heading over to the DevNet Zone. We love taking the time to chat in here and uh, you know, hear more about what's exciting uh, in, the, in the world of APIs. Um, and that's where the DevNet Zone comes in. So, Michael Beasley, you're the CTO for Cisco Networking and you know, one of the API champions for that group. So I wanted to hear more. You know, we've worked with your teams for a year now and they've made so much progress in that time. Um, so what, any, if anything, has surprised you about you know, the process, the progress, all that to improve API quality? Well, it's great to be here with you, Anne, and I always love uh, to spend time in the, in the DevNet zone. Um, over the last year, I'd say there's a couple of things that have really stood out and surprised me. Uh, the first has been the incredible support and championing of API quality and, and this initiative across the Cisco leadership in, in every function, from, from uh, the CEO to the ELT, across all of engineering, uh, leaders in, in CX and sales. It's been, it's been amazing and, and really has been a material difference with regard to you know, creating momentum and driving prioritization. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the second thing that has really stood out to me as we've worked with such a diverse set of engineering teams across our portfolio is just the level of in, in excitement and engagement mm -hmm. and energy each and every team has shown yeah. with regard to the API work for their particular area or product and technology. And, and for me, it's, it's, it's incredibly positive and really a representation of Cisco being able to come together mm -hmm. as one Cisco and one team, and it's yeah. been great to see. Yeah, I love to hear one Cisco. I really feel that way when we work with the teams. They're ready to go, they want developer experience to be improved, and all of that starts with the APIs, so yeah. absolutely. Now, you know, are there any challenges teams had to overcome? It's not easy work, we recognize this, and I think you're one of the you know, basic, you know this, that's not, not easy, and it's not going to take a short amount of time. So, what, what, what are the challenges? Yeah, it, it, there's definitely some, some challenges. I mean, some, some are, are just innate with regard to the technologies and the art that we, uh, we work with. I would say, yeah. uh, Probably the, the main challenge is if you look at our portfolios and, and the, the longevity of the portfolio, we've been, we've been building APIs as, as Cisco and as a networking industry, we've been building APIs for several decades. If, even yeah. if you go all the way back to things like the SNMP protocol, that, that was a rudimentary or, or you know, uh, API uh, yeah. ability on the equipment. So over time we've built up layers of APIs at different levels of abstraction. So I think mm -hmm. one, one of the challenges uh, that we have is always understanding at what level and, and abstraction level should we prioritize with regard to yeah. API work and API quality? Should it be the lowest level primitives on equipment? Mm -hmm. Should it be newer interfaces mm -hmm. on equipment, things like open telemetry and open config? Right. Or should it be, uh, should the priority and focus be around the controller layer mm -hmm. that is emerging as, as really a really powerful forward looking uh, architecture yep. whereby you have controllers managing the network elements themselves and the real focus on API quality should be around the controller uh, layer, and then all the way up to you know cloud management and and SaaS platforms that uh, people can use to drive uh, their network infrastructure. So I think one of the challenges, and certainly a, a feedback that we'd continue to love to get from our developer community the and the and the ecosystem is, you know, we have finite resources, right. we have finite time. Right. Um, at which layer for each portfolio for each uh, technology stack, at which layer of these APIs should we really focus on and drive quality to, to get the, the best reward for our yeah. investments, and obviously to make the most impact to our developer community. Yeah, and that's, that's a great point, is we want that feedback, we want that input. Um, we're very empathetic to the developer experience, so yeah. Um, now, you know, you, you're a CTO, technical leader. Do you have any advice for other technical leaders who have to tackle this kind of challenge? Uh, maybe starting new, starting with layers upon layers, like you're saying, um, any, any advice? Yeah, so it, it's, it's a very interesting uh, question. Um, I mean, I think the, the art of API development and lifecycle management has been well, well explored and mm -hmm. continues to, to evolve. Mm -hmm. I would say I would separate my advice into two different streams, whether it's 
greenfield new development or brownfield kind of life cycle management of existing technology. On the new development, I think um, one, of, one of the things that we try and, and do and, and how we approach, you know, starting with architecture and design and into implementation mm -hmm. is having the API work and the API interfaces get defined early and implemented early such that as we're doing unit tests, as we're doing development, as we're doing, you know, working through our CICD pipeline, we're actually exercising the API interfaces and their machinery mm -hmm. to continue to do the development and to drive quality and to find and, and fix uh, defects in the in the implementation, rather than using the other interfaces, right? Gotcha. You can always use a, a you know the user interface, or if your system has a, a command line interface, you could use those mechanisms. But given that that we all prefer and we think that that our ecosystem, our developers much prefer mm -hmm. to automate and to interface with our technology through APIs, yep. that if we use the APIs as actually a, a, a pivotal part of the development mechanism, that we get to better defined APIs, mm -hmm. Uh, more complete implementations and better quality on those API interfaces. Yeah. Uh, with regard to brownfield, that's mm -hmm. that's more more difficult. It is. Um, I, I would say, on on the brownfield, being able to lifecycle manage all of the management interfaces into the technology is 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 extremely important. Mm -hmm. If you can continue to uh, minimize the interfaces. If you can end of life interfaces mm -hmm. um, and, and, and try and streamline how your user community is using the technology, mm -hmm. it gives you the freedom, it frees up the resources, the time and the, the engineering manpower to be able to focus more on developing high quality APIs on that existing technology. Yeah. So that, that so, would be the, the main advice. Yeah, I would and that give. really ties into yesterday's keynote, you know, simplify, simplify. We think simplification is through APIs, yes. actually. So that, that is that is great to hear. So yeah, thanks so much for coming in, for answering some of these questions. I'm sure they'll help somebody out in their adventure with APIs. It's Appreciate my pleasure, it, Michael. Man. Nice to see you.